Okay, so welcome back. Today we're going to take the next step in our discussion of this really amazing device you see here. And we talked in previous videos about this um, Arduino Uno, which has built-in Wi-Fi. And it's very inexpensive. It's only like five or six US dollars. Really amazing. And what we've got here is we've got the results of what we've been talking about, how you can use the Wi-Fi capability on this device to allow you to access the device, access the analog and digital GPIO pins, and send data over Wi-Fi to your computer and either gather data or send commands to the GPIO pins to control a device or to gather analog or digital data. So really wonderful device. I encourage you to look at the previous videos. Uh, we talked about the various aspects of this. We talked about Wi-Fi networking. Uh, we talked about building a C-sharp application that will allow you to connect with this over Wi-Fi. You can do it with Python. You can do it with whatever you want. The concepts are the same. But uh, we've talked about all the different aspects of this. And now we're going to bring all that together and put this into an actual project, an actual application where we're going to measure some real world data. And the day we're going to measure is something that's really fascinating. We did a separate video on it. And it is the frequency of the power system voltage fed to you by your power company. And we talked in our previous video about the electric power system frequency, how it's a really fascinating kind of a heartbeat of the power system that you can monitor and find out how the entire power system that feeds you and your neighbors and your town and your city and your state and your even your country, how that's doing, whether it's uh, within the correct range or maybe there's some heavy overloads on the power system. You can find out what the status is. So we're going to show you how to use this portable Wi-Fi connected Arduino to measure the wall voltage frequency. And we can plot it in our application, as we talked about previously, and get some really good um, information about it. And what we're going to use is this application here where we um, are going to tweak an application we used before, and it's measuring in real time the frequency of what we've got now, which is a signal generator connected, and it's measuring the uh, frequency. And what we're going to do is we're going to replace the signal generator with a circuit that connects to the wall outlet so that we can measure the actual voltage. So here I've got my signal generator on the bench, and it is sending out a 60 hertz square wave to my Arduino with Wi-Fi. And there's only two wires coming out of the signal generator feeding into the digital input on the Arduino. And it is totally disconnected from the computer, no USB connection except to the battery that is powering it. And it is taking that 60 hertz square wave and it is converting that into a value of 60.00 hertz and sending that string over Wi-Fi to our computer. And here I've got the application that we've uh, built before and we've tweaked a little bit for this series that is going to grab that um, value over the Wi-Fi, set up a client server network and grab that signal and display it here. So I'm going to start this up. And you can see it's started up and is immediately printing out values it's receiving in real time from the signal generator. And what I can do is I can go and change the value on the signal generator. You can watch this update in real time. So you can see as the frequency changed, it updated immediately. And uh, what we're going to do is show you how to replace the signal generator with the actual wall voltage from our power company and do the exact same thing, measure the wall voltage. So as with any engineering real world project, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to design it. Unlike uh, the biggest mistake that um, hobbyists and newbies will always make is they'll jump in and start writing code and then get running down a rabbit hole and make a lot of mistakes and get frustrated and run off and start crying and go play video games. In our case, we're going to do like we always do and we're going to design it and try to understand the basic concepts so it'll be a lot easier to implement because once you understand the basics, writing the code becomes a whole lot easier and a whole lot more logical. 
So here we've got our five or six dollar Arduino with built-in Wi-Fi. We talked about this in a previous video. And the connections we're going to have to this are very, very simple. You can see up top, the first thing we need, as with any electronic circuit, we need some power coming in to power the circuit. And we've got a couple choices. We can use, as we showed previously, uh, coming in the USB, we can connect that to a simple USB battery for your smartphone or whatever and just use the 5 volts coming from that to power it. Or we can use this barrel connector, which gives you a, a wider range of input DC voltage you can use to power it. Uh, in this case, we can use 7 to 12 volts DC, which can come from a, a wall adapter or it can come from a different battery. Or you can, as we're going to do, you can make a simple circuit that will give us somewhere 12, 7 to 12 volts DC to power it. But the main thing is you need to have some sort of power to power the circuit. And then the only other two connections are going to be the input, which is go, going to go into this uh, digital pin and the GPIO pins. And we're going to use digital 2 as we did in the previous video where we talked about this frequency counter or frequency measurement circuit. And we're going to feed it a square wave that represents the 60 hertz or 50 hertz nominal um, voltage from the power company you're receiving from your wall outlet. So we're going to take that sine wave from the wall outlet, convert it to a square wave, uh, make sure it's uh, within the 0 to 5 volt range so we don't damage the digital pin. And we're going to feed that into the digital pin. And what this is going to do is the ATmega328 has a great functionality where you see this um, 16 megahertz crystal here. As we showed in the video where you talked about frequency measurement, what we can do is we can use that crystal, that high frequency crystal. And what it will do is it will sense when we have a rising edge, as you can see here for our square wave, a rising edge and what it will do it will start a timer and it will start counting how many pulses of this crystal occur between this first rising edge and the second rising edge which defines one cycle of the waveform and at the second rising edge it will stop the counter and tell us how many counts of that crystal oscillator occurred in this one cycle and if we know how many counts per cycle, we can invert that to get hertz or cycles per second. And then it will take that value and make it into a value that looks like this and send that string over Wi-Fi. So it's all done in this Arduino. And again, as we talked in the previous video, there's basically two main processors. There's the ATmega328, which interacts with the GPIO pins and does the um, serial connection. And also there is an ESP8266, which does um, the connection to the Wi-Fi, but also connects to the AT Mega. So basically we're going to be um, interacting between the ESP8266 and the AT Mega to grab this data and then send it over Wi-Fi. So it's really fairly simple um, connections to this. The, the complications are like we talked about before, we're going to have to write two sketches, one for the AT Mega and one for the ESP8266, because they're going to have different functions. But again, we've already done 90% um, of those sketches. We're just going to tweak them a little bit for this particular application. But that's the basic concept behind this. So here is a little bit more detailed diagram of what we're going to build. And we're even going to put it into a box. We may attach an external Wi-Fi antenna to give it more range. We'll show you that. But basically, um, as we talked about before, when we did our Arduino frequency meter application, uh, what we did is we took our 120 volt AC wall outlet voltage, 60 hertz here in the US. We're going to feed it through a fuse into a transformer, which converts that 120 volts to 12 volts AC. And the 12 volts AC is going to have two uses for us. One is going to be it's going to provide us DC power for Arduino, our 7 to 12 volts we talked about. So we're going to have to take that 12 volt sine wave, uh, do a full wave rectifier, and then I'm going to use a buck converter to make that into 7 to 12 volt for the power input. We'll talk about that in detail. But basically we're going to use this 12 volts to power our Arduino. But for the measurement, we're going to take that 12 volts AC, and as we did in our frequency measurement application, we're going to first apply a low-pass filter to get some of the noise, what we talked about, the harmonics 
that uh, occur in our 60 hertz wall outlet voltage because of fluorescent lights and nonlinear transformers and that kind of thing. We're going to filter some of that out and then we're going to feed it into an opto isolator to isolate that from the Arduino and to basically convert it to a square wave. So here's where the square wave is going to come into our digital two pin and we're going to have our power in and then we're going to use five volts out for this opto isolator circuit. But basically, we're going to have this antenna circuit with the ESP8266 that sends the information over the Wi-Fi to our application. And we're going to do that every half second. Actually, we're going to choose every tenth of a second to make it update a little bit more quickly. But that's the basic concept. We're going to convert this to a square wave, the 12 volts AC, and then also use the 12 volts uh, for power. And that's about it. Okay, so here's the basic steps we're going to need to perform to get this all working. And again, most of this stuff, 90% um, of this we've already done in previous videos. We've talked about Wi-Fi connections. We've talked about frequency measurement. So all we're going to do is we're going to have to modify some of the stuff we've done previously to make it work in this particular situation where we're combining frequency measurement and the Wi-Fi. So the first thing we have to modify the AT Mega 328 sketch to do frequency measurements every tenth of a second and send the result to the ESP8266. And then we're going to have to modify the ESP8266 sketch to grab frequency measurement from the AT Mega and then send it over Wi-Fi to the C-Sharp application. Then we're going to have to modify the C-Sharp application to grab and display that frequency. Again, most of the stuff is pretty much ready to go with some minor tweaks. And then we're going to have to build a square wave opto isolator circuit we've already covered before. We've already built that before. And in fact, I went out and ordered from Osh Park a simple printed circuit board for very inexpensive that's going to allow us to put that on a, on a little board. Then we're going to have to build a 12 volt AC rectifier circuit, um, basically a full wave rectifier and a little um, filtering and a buck converter to get it in the correct range. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put it all into a box that looks like this and add an external Wi-Fi antenna, which we may not need, but at least uh, it'll help us extend the range. We're going to have to add a fuse and a power cord, but it's all going to end up in a box like this, which is really nice because then we can move it to any outlet and it should, as long as it's within Wi-Fi range, it'll be able to communicate. We can add other functionality into the box if we want. So those are the steps and in the next few videos, we're going to go through and finish this up and show you how to complete it. Again, I encourage you to look at the previous videos so you, you can understand what's going on with these different steps. And if you like any of these videos, I encourage you to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications. But most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.